All right, ladies and gentlemen, today I'm gonna to show you guys how to create the advanced payload system where players can move, remove, where players can contest and all that kind of stuff. But it's not only good for people that want to create payload system, it's also amazing for everybody that wants to use any kind of player interaction with objectives that want to move forward, can be stopped by AI, can be stopped by players. So it's not only for people that want to create payload maps, it is for everybody. So let's jump right into it. So as you can see, this is my payload and I want to move it forward. I'm going in here and I'm moving it forward. I even sit on this payload because I have the bots for it. Now this guy comes in here and stops my pet for whatever reason. So I go down here and tell him, get the f out of here. I could also kill him if I want to, but I just, I'm just nice today. So this guy decides to actually leave the payload and now my journey continues. But for the whatever reason, I forgot to actually stay inside of the payload's ring and now the payload stops. So all I have to do is go back in and move it forward. Now the rude guy too decides to interrupt me again and now wants to fight. So I decide to kill him and take the payload to the end. And these are the things that you need to create a payload. You need a trigger device, a prop mover, you need a payload obviously, you need the capture area and you need the player counter. Starting out with the payload, from this payload prop specifically is from the IO Blimp prop gallery and you can find it down here. But however, you can use anything that you want to move from point A to point B. So you can use, for example, a forklift, you can use this washing thing, or you can, whatever is that called. These are all from the same gallery. This is all from the Commander Kevin Prop Gallery A, and you, you can see, basically, you can use anything. For example, this prop over here kind of would work as well. It has wheels, it can move forward. Or you can even go full size and use one of these things. However, I would resign from using very custom pieces or make the pieces that you use in these custom pieces very big because you have to place prop movers on each and every single one of them and that could get a little bit annoying. All right, so the next thing that we need to set up is the capture area. And in this capture area, we actually don't have to change a lot. The first thing is where do we place this? So I'd highly recommend not placing it too high because there's a chance that the characters not actually activate the capture zone, which is kind of needed. Um, also placing it below can sometimes be very tricky with a prop mover, but obviously that depends on your payload. So for example, I placed it in front of here. When it comes down to the device settings, we actually don't have to change a lot. Obviously the capture radius and height depends completely on you. So that is your payload, how big it is, how big you want to have it, it doesn't really matter. The next thing is item visibility visible during game. As you saw in my beginning, I had the zone on actually to show it for a purpose, but you can actually turn it off so you don't have this little device here floating around, which doesn't make any sense. So you can turn that off very easily. The next thing is very important. Can be captured on team. This one has to be on a team that is actually moving the payload. This is very important. The next one is neutralizing time, it has to be to instant, then you can again turn all the effects off and we don't really need them. And now we come to the channels. Neutralizing when, when receiving from has to be on a custom channel. When area contested has to be on a custom channel and when change controlled has to be on a custom channel as well. I can show you guys in a second why we need that. All right, the next thing we need to do is place our prop mover. This prop mover, we can first of all start with one because we can then just easily duplicate it because we need the same prop mover for each and every single thing that we have in this payload. So starting in the prop mover, there's also not a lot that we can change. Distance depends on you, speed also depends on you. I would not make it too fast because the people cannot sprint as fast. So one meter or two meters should be enough. Time from start needs to be on off. All the AI collision stuff needs to be on off as well. No damage, but you can obviously customize that as well. Okay, coming to the channels, these are obviously important. The start when receiving from needs to be on the same channel as the when control change channel. So that means basically if team one is going close to the zone, the prop needs to start moving. The next one is pause when receiving from. This needs to be on channel two. This is very important. When enemies come close to the zone, we want this to be contested and we don't want the pedal to move anymore. And the last one is also resume or advance when receiving from. You can choose either of those settings. Has to be on channel one as well. So we want to obviously continue if the, the side is cleared, if there's only the attacking team pushing. So have that on the same channel as well. Now, now, you, can play, now you can place the prop mover on the capture area and you can also place it on the payload. All right, some of you probably saw that there's a channel on neutralizing when receiving from that we haven't used yet. This one we need for the player counter. Why do we need that? Because there is no setting in the capture area which allows us if anybody steps out of the capture area that the payload stops. For example, if no one of the enemy team or our team is close to the payload, it should not move at all. But it would move if we wouldn't have this setting. So we're gonna have this on a custom setting. Now we can go on our prop mover and change a few settings as well. First of all, there is nothing that really matters on this first few settings here. Actually, we only need one setting. 
you need to make sure that it's obviously a zone and it's a cylinder. So it's basically the same size as our cap chariot. So it makes sense. All the other things are super custom to you. You can do whatever you want in here. It really depends on you. The only setting that is important is when player removes transmit on channel three. That means if a player leaves this zone, so you can see it right here, if there is this zero, which now means it sends a signal to our capture area, which then is the neutralizing option. That means that the capture area get neutralized. And then the last thing that we just need is to make the payload stop. Obviously we have the payload stop on channel two, so we cannot use it on channel three, which is very good because we can just use a trigger device. Because for that, we can actually just use a trigger device, which we can just have triggered when receiving from on channel three and when triggered transmit on channel two. So that means we're gonna send a signal if someone is leaving the zone to this device. This device neutralizes the zone, which also activates the trigger, which then activates the prop mover, which then also stops the problem. It sounds very confusing, but it's actually super simple and a very basic setting to do. And that is basically all you have to do. Now the only thing that you have to do is make sure that everything is connected to prop movers, everything is aligned perfectly with each other, so you have basically the zone covering the other zones, uh, and also everything moving at the same time. Okay, I quickly have to stop Richie Toons here, and I have to interview with Richie Toons. While editing this, I found out that there's actually a bug which sometimes prevents the pilot from moving if you use these first settings. However, you can use this little trick when you have the control time on 10. So you leave all the settings the same, but you're gonna have the control time from instant to 10 minutes. And then you go down here and change the uh, when control changes to when control starts transmit on channel one. So this will basically allow you, so if you can, you can see you can see you can have the same kind of thing here. So you can go in here, you can go out and the payload stops. You can go in and the payload moves again. So it's the same thing, but with a different setting if you occur this bug where it basically doesn't want to move forward. However, it has a lot of bugs and uh, there's nothing that you can do right now to fix it. And I hope that uh, Epic is gonna fix them uh, in future or that they get less buggy where they basically transmit signals when they should transmit them and not when they like feel like they want to transmit signals. Um, so yeah. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I try to answer them. I know there will be a lot of bugs in this one and a lot of people will struggle to get this working because just Fortnite Creative does Fortnite Creative things. So uh, definitely let me know in the comments. I will try to help you if possible and I will see you guys back in the next one.